On April 14 to 18 all assets under the Russian Navy's Pacific Fleet went on heightened alert and began the first stage of a major surprise combat readiness involving over 25,000 personnel and 167 ships. Preventing enemy penetration into the southern part of the Sea of Okhotsk and repelling enemy landings on the island of Sakhalin and the southern Kuril Islands were also key parts of the exercises, the launch of which represents part of a broader emphasis in the Russian military on very large surprise drills to ensure high levels of combat readiness. The exercises come during a period of high tensions with NATO, which has been rapidly expanding its military presence in the Western Pacific and strengthening integration with Japan, with which Russia has an outstanding territorial dispute over the Kuril Islands. The latest Pacific exercises have notably focused on anti-submarine warfare, with submarine capabilities being a particular strength of the Japanese and US navies. Japan has notably been the first in the world to deploy submarines with lithium-ion batteries in their propulsion systems, for much improved stealth over ships fielded abroad, including those in the Russian fleet. Notable deployments to support Russian anti-submarine warfare efforts have included those of COT-27 PL helicopters with dip sonars, which flew from the decks of participating ships, as well as the two 142M3 long-range anti-submarine warfare aircraft, which are capable of loitering for very considerably periods. These provided targeting data for accompanying warships to launch salvos of depth charge rocket launches. Russian anti-submarine warfare capabilities in the region are expected to receive a significant boost from the deployment of two large 40,000-ton helicopter carriers, which are currently under construction in Crimea, at least one of which is expected to join the Pacific Fleet. Currently destroyers such as the Utiloy class can carry two anti-submarine warfare helicopters each, but the new carriers will be able to deploy several dozen. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu elaborated on the 17th regarding Pacific drills. The troops are exercising to conduct qualification firings and tactical drills and practice multi-service force interoperability. The anti-submarine quick reaction alert forces have carried out measures to hunt down submarines at approaches to the Peter the Great Bay and the Avacha Bay. The Pacific Fleet's naval aircraft are deployed at operational airfields. The aircraft of the Long Range Aviation Military Command have redeployed two forward aerodromes. President Vladimir Putin on the 17th praised the exercises, stressing that the first stage of the sudden inspection has passed at a very high level, expressing gratitude to all those involved. Entering their final stage on April 18, exercises will begin to focus on simulating massive missile strikes on enemy positions from both naval strike groups and coastal defense batteries. Later stages of the exercises have also involved the use of Russia's ballistic missile submarines for simulated intercontinental range strikes, with protection of these assets being one of the fleet's primary missions. Only the Pacific and Arctic fleets host ballistic missile submarines, the inventory of which has been modernized rapidly in recent years and made a priority for investment. The Pacific Fleet currently deploys three of the new Boré-class ballistic missile submarines, alongside 15 attack submarines, as well one cruiser the flagship Slava-class ship Beryag, five destroyers and four frigates.
Destroyers and frigates across the Russian Navy are all Soviet-built vessels, as the country's shipbuilding industry has yet to recover the ability to construct such ships, despite being able to build very large nuclear submarines, which reflects the Navy's prioritization of submarine capabilities over the past 30 years. Both old and new vessels of all classes, down to and including the smallest corvette-sized surface ships, have been made compatible with a range of modern missile classes however, which has helped compensate for the age of many of the fleet's larger ships. The Uvaloy class destroyer Marshal Shaposhnikov which serves in the Pacific Fleet was confirmed in 2019 to be Russia's first destroyer, which would integrate the country's new Zikran hypersonic cruise missiles, which are currently considered to have no rivals abroad in terms of performance. The Navorn is between April 20 to 29, covering a distance of 3,500 kilometers from the Barents Sea to the East Siberian Sea. Observers point to how the test of any strategic missile system at this juncture in the war signals and deters the U.S. from directly confronting Russia. The war has reached a crucial point at Bakhmut and is seeing a second round of low-level nuclear brinkmanship between Russia and the West. Having already gone past a year, Russia expects the US to continue arming Ukraine and wear it down. It hopes to seize the few remaining areas in separatist Donbas and Kherson. Zirkin was expected to be launched during the 10-day naval exercises between Russia, South Africa, and China in February this year. However, reports later said no such launch would take place. Captain Oleg Gladky, who was heading the Russian contingent, was quoted by Reuters as having said so during a media interaction at Richards Bay. He denied that a test firing of the Zirkin was a part of the planned artillery drills. The hypersonic weapon will not be used in the context of these exercises. There is no hidden meaning in the exercises that we are performing today Gladky had said.